we have Topology 5 set up in our uh, Linux virtual network. So using VirtualBox, we've already established uh, and configured Topology 5, which has three nodes, one, two, and three. Those three nodes are already running, and I've logged into each of them using username network, password network. And we have access to those three Linux computers via these windows here. The picture shows us the topology, node 1 and node 2 on the same subnet, network A, and node 2 and 3 are on a separate subnet, network B, and node 2 is acting as a router. So what we'll do here is demo two things. We'll just uh, ping from node 1 to node 3, and it should get a response. But we'll also capture or record packets on node 2 using a software called TCP dump. And then importantly, we'll copy the file which has the captured packets from node 2, the virtual machine, to our host computer, my Windows computer. So let's start our ping from node 1. We're going to ping node 3, and the IP address of node 3 is 192.168. That's what all the virtual nodes have as an IP address. But what's the specific address? Well, we can check on node 3, interface EDH1 has IP address 192.168.2.21. Let's ping. And it's getting response. We know how ping works. We get a response back from the, the receiving node. Now, on node 2, the router, those ping messages, which are using ICMP, should be going through node 2. So node 2 should see those messages. We can use software called TCP dump, which we run using the administrator command sudo, TCP dump will show us the messages which are going uh, through an interface on node 2. TCP dump, let's dump everything that's going to interface minus I, ETH1 on node 2. Minus N option I commonly use saying I don't want to know any domain names, I just want the raw IP addresses. And let's run this command. We need the password, which is network, and it shows us some messages on the screen. And if you look closely, you'll see that they are ICMP echo requests and echo replies. And if you check the IP addresses, you'll see they're between uh, node 1 and node 3. It's a bit hard to see on the screen. So what I'm going to do is, using that TCP dump command, is Control c to stop it. I press the Control c uh, combination there, it'll stop the, the capture with TCP dump. Let's run the capture again, but instead of printing the packets on the screen, let's save them to a file. Right, using the minus W option to a file, let's call it ping1.pcap. pcap is the common extension we use for packet captures. We run that command. It doesn't display on the screen, but it should be saving those packets into a format into that file. And when we want to stop the capture, control C again. And it said there were 30 packets received and 30 packets captured. And they should have been written to a file. If I do ls to list the files on my computer, I see that there's a file called ping1.pcap. But that's on the uh, node 2. Useful for us is we can open these files with Wireshark, and Wireshark is very nice for graphically looking at the packets and doing filters and, and, and finding details of packets. But Wireshark runs in a GUI. Node 2 is just a command line. It doesn't have a GUI. So what we need to do is copy that file from Node 2 onto my host computer, into my Windows uh, operating system, and then we can open it with Wireshark. So let's show how to do that. I'll just stop the ping on Node 1. So the file's on node 2, but it's inside that Linux virtual machine. How do I copy it to my host computer? We need some file copying software, and I will use FileZilla. But you may use something like WinS WinSCP to do the same thing. So we'll just demo with FileZilla. FileZilla allows us to copy files or transfer files between computers across a network. And the way that the nodes are set up, I'll just go back here. Uh, our three nodes, one, two, and three, they're actually running a secure shell server which we can access via Windows. 
So each node is set up such that they run a secure shell server and allow us to copy from my Windows computer to and from each node. And we've set them up such that the port number that the secure shell server runs on is based upon their node number. So in red here, node 1 is running a secure shell server on port 22201, node 2 on 2202, and node 3 on 2203. So if you want to access a file from any of those nodes, you connect to a secure shell server on the specific port of the node. The nodes are actually running on uh, my local host. So let's see how we access them with FileZilla. I'm in FileZilla. We can either do the shortcut here or we can create using Site Manager a new site. Let's call it Node 2. And the address of Node 2 from my Windows machine's perspective, it's on the local host or simply 127.0.0.1. The protocol we're going to use is SFTP, not normal SFTP. So select that. We have a normal login where the username is network and the password is network. It's the same. Importantly, you must set the port number to be that of the node you want to connect to. Here, node 2, the port number we've set up is 2202. So it's 22, which is secure shell port number, followed by the node number using a zero where necessary. Connect to the local host, port 2202, using Username network, password network. Let's try that. Connect. It says, do you want to trust it? Well, yes, we've created that virtual machine. I will always trust that. And now in this side of our FileZilla, we see the files on my Node 2. And we notice ping1.pcap is there on the virtual machine. I can double click that to download into my Windows computer open up Windows Explorer and we now see ping1.pcap is on my Windows computer. I can double click that and open up the capture in Wireshark on my Windows computer. So this allows us to analyze the packet captures inside the virtual network but we can make use of the graphical software such as Wireshark to, to make much more easier analysis. So importantly here, to transfer files from a virtual node to your host Windows computer, you can use FileZilla. You can also do similar with WinSCP, both are free software. And make sure when you set up the, the connection that you specify the correct port number. And that's simply 22 followed by the node ID. You can copy files in the opposite direction as well.